Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for pulling this together. I really appreciate it. I'd like to submit for the record a letter from the U.S. Travel Association. I'll get it submitted to your team, uh, where they talk about how their unemployment rate is 34.5 percent versus the national average of 8.4 percent, and how they're affected by the downturn in the With that travel industry. That objections. That should be the order. Thank you very much. I want to thank all the witnesses. Uh, mayor Dyer, I'm a former mayor myself. I could just imagine how frustrating it is for you when you have all your local residents coming to you and you just don't have the, you don't have the power to fix this problem. This is a national problem that requires the federal government's help. And my heart goes out to you because I know you care about your people. And Sandra Bernstein, thank you so much. Uh, it was really so inspiring to listen to you when you talked about what a joy you get from serving people like that. And uh, Christine Ha, the same thing. I want you to know, uh, Ms. Ha, that uh, when you were speaking, I was listening to you and I was looking at the faces of my colleagues and people were smiling listening to your story. Everything that you shared with us and Mario uh, Sandoval and Saru Jairman, thank you for making it clear that this is not just about the businesses, which is so, are so important, but it's about the workers. And there are so many people unemployed right now. And the unemployment rate amongst restaurant workers is higher uh, than any other industry in the country just about. And especially with ca catering halls, I've got, uh, I've got uh, 8,000 restaurants and catering halls here on Long Island, 100,000 people in, involved in the empl employment. And the, the reaction to the coronavirus has been so uneven. You know, right now, grocery stores are doing great. Online businesses are doing great. Some restaurants have a lot of outdoor capacity and they're doing pretty well. And they have takeout businesses that are doing well, but other places don't have outdoor facilities and they're just shut down. And people are afraid to go indoors and some places have restrictions on going indoors. So it's just so uneven and it's so unfair and it's it, it's so frustrating here in Washington where we know we have to do something and we're not getting it done. This is my mic. So and I want to uh, associate myself with all of my colleagues' remarks, everything everybody's had to say, except for Mr. Rice. I'm not going to associate myself with Mr. Rice's remarks because it's just so divisive and so inappropriate. I think that we need to really figure out how we can get going together. And I want to thank Mr. Rodriguez for uh, him being here today as well. And I want to ask him some questions, if I may, Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, are you there, Mr. Rodriguez? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. How many restaurants would you say there are in the United States of America? Because I see some places where it says 685,000 restaurants and other places a million. Do you have any sense of how many restaurants there are in America? So food service establishments are in the uh, million range. And would you say how many people are how many people were employed in the restaurant slash catering business before the fifteen point one million? And how and what what would you say the unemployment rate is now among the restaurant business? Uh, it, right now we we have about seven million unemployed. So just think about that seven million of fifteen million. It's almost fifty percent of people are unemployed, and the unemployment rate nationwide is eight point five percent. So yes, this sir. is just a devastating impact on this industry. That's why I'm so happy. I'm, co I'm co-sponsoring, original co-sponsor uh, with uh, Earl Blumenauer on the Restaurants Act. And, uh, you know, it, it provides $120 billion in grants, outright grants to restaurants that compare their 2020 revenues to their 2019 revenues. And it would be like such a godsend to the people that are suffering so much. And for those restaurants that are doing fine, their revenues won't be as off from 2019 as they were in to, uh, as they are in 2020. But for those places that are shut down or you know can't open, they're only indoor, they have no outdoor facilities, uh, they'll get a lot of help. So it's, it really makes a lot of sense to me. And you know we got the winter coming. You know, and down down where you are, Mr. Rodriguez, it's very different. I want you to know that Senator Cassidy, a Republican, though, is one of the lead sponsors for state and local aid in the in the in the federal government right now. He really wants to get. Uh, state and local aid, you know, so some people say this is not, you know, we're holding ransom or something, something absurd like that. Uh, your your se senator, who's a Republican, is one of the strongest sponsors of state and local aid. Uh, and I want to point out that I'm the vice chairman of a group called the Problem Solvers Caucus. We've got 25 Democrats and 25 Republicans to try and find some common ground on some of these issues here. And we got 25 Republicans to agree that we need to have $500 billion in state and local aid. So, and we got 25 Democrats to agree that we need to do some liability reform. Anyway, Mr. Uh, Rodriguez, uh, what do you think we? What do you think the most important thing we need to do for the restaurants is? Is it the PPP? 
It's the, the restaurant. The, the gentleman's time has expired. Oh, sorry. Oh, 